Hello, everyone. My name is Ann Mangelsdorf, and I am your host this evening. Welcome to this evening's webinar entitled Home Alone Skills and Social Media Safety. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing Tracy Thomas and Carlton McKinney. Tracy has been working with the St. Louis Arc for the last 27 and a half years, and Carlton McKinney has been with the St. Louis Arc for 14 years. So we look forward to hearing from them this evening. Without further ado, I will turn this workshop over to Tracy and Carlton. The first thing I want to say is that this, um... This presentation kind of started as um, I'm a residential coordinator and we were trying to figure out in, in our home situations how that we know if it's, so, it's safe for somebody to stay home alone. So we started this many years ago and as we have gone, it has kind of progressed as technology and everything has progressed. Now we have included social media safety. Um, I've got some home safety skills ideas in here. It just continues to evolve and change. I will tell you every time that I teach this, I add more stuff, take out some old stuff, really try to kind of look at things. And um, my co-presenter today is Carlton. He works um, with, the fam with families and he really helps get them set up with all of the kind of things that they need for, for different kinds of equipment and getting them set up online and, and things like that. So hopefully we can um, go through here and give you some knowledge and uh, we're glad to answer any questions that we have. And if we don't have the answers, we'll be glad to um, look them up and, and get back to you on that. So without further ado, we are going to start with what the presentation is, Home Alone. It's scary. It's scary for a lot of people to think about their loved one staying home alone and, and what needs to happen for that, for that to happen. So the first thing we need to look at is before you even think about them staying home alone, you're going to look at your home safety. We look at emergency drills, and that may sound kind of silly, but with the emergency drills, you want to look like if, if the tornado alarm goes off, does, does your loved one know where to go? Do they know what to do? If they don't, then that's not, we can't control the weather. Um, that's not a time that to, to really think about them being home alone at this time. And also stranger awareness. If somebody knocks on the door, will they go with them? Will they leave? Will they um, let somebody in the home? I can give you a perfect example in one of the homes I support, the staff went downstairs to do the laundry and came, up, came back upstairs and there was somebody standing in, standing in the house and um, somebody knocked on the door in two minutes and the person let them in. So it's something to think about and something to kind of really look at that. So the way we've developed this is I have, I have made what's called a home alone safety assessment. And the way that is set up is it's set up into questions. So you will see the questions on the, la on the left side and you will see what's called a probe. So things that you need to ask, things that you need to think about, things that you need to be aware of if someone is going to be home alone. So the first thing to ask is, does the person want to be home alone? Um, I know sometimes it, it may be a position that you don't really have a choice, but if they don't want to be home alone, it's probably not going to be to be successful. So looking at this, um, do you, does your house have all the safety equipment that, that is needed? Do you have smoke detectors? Do you have carbon monoxide detectors? Do you have fire extinguishers? And if you have fire extinguishers, there's a few things you need to think about. Do you want the, your loved one to be able to access the fire extinguishers? Um, something else to think about. And also weather radios. Um, weather radios, I think, are becoming a little less important. We have them in all of our homes. But it's also a good thing if everything is off for some reason, if you don't have the television on. I know most people have cell phones now, so it does help with getting the alerts and those kind of things, but it's just one extra thing of protection for, for your family. Another thing to think about with home safety, are the windows and doors locked? Um, can the person get in, get out? If there's a fire, can they get out without assistance? 
Do you have first aid um, supplies? Do you want them to be able to use first aid supplies? I support somebody um, right now that I do not want to leave a first aid kit because every one of our band-aids will be out because they like band-aids. So that is something that um, if we look at her staying home alone, we would look at making sure that kind of stuff is secured along with um, poisons and things like that. So you want to think about things that are going to be limited if you um, want the person to be home alone. Do you, is it okay for them to cook, for the shower, go outside, answer the door, use appliances? Uh, just because maybe they can't do all of this doesn't mean that they can't stay home alone. It just needs to look, maybe look at that we need to look at different kinds of adaptions. Um, somebody in one of my other classes that I taught talked about a lock on their stove and it was just a little lock that they had and it, it prevented them from turning on the the stove in the oven while they were gone it was just a small lock another person told me about when they're home alone uh, their their loved one was home alone they just took off the knobs off the um the front of the oven and that worked so little things like that thinking about that kind of stuff ha again have you um practiced your safety drills does, do they know where to go in case of an emergency? One of the things that we do in each of our group homes, and I would recommend everyone doing it in, in each of their homes, is contacting the police department and letting them flag your home address and let them know that you have a person with disabilities that lives there. That way they know if you get any phone call from that home that they have a really good idea and that they know the kind of what they're walking into. An example um, I can get, and again, most of these are group homes examples because I am a residential coordinator, but I also do respite in people's homes. But um, we had someone who had to go to the hospital and they were going to one of the homes that we had flagged. And when they arrived, um, they knew they actually brought in a couple of extra firemen. They had um, hats, they had stickers, things to do to keep the other guys entertained so they could work on the person who needed help. And it was so beneficial and so helpful to have that. And it's very, very needed. That way, if something does happen and somebody calls by accident or something happens, then they know what they're getting into when they call you or come to your home. Sorry. So um, I mentioned about my assessment. So now I'm going to show you kind of how it's set up. So each of them has a question and each of them has a probe. So the way these works is there's questions. So the question is, does the person recognize signals for a fire? Uh, and a, the probe means, how do we find that out if they're safe to be alone, home alone? So you, you would ask them things like, what does it look like if there's a fire? And you're gonna look for things like there's smoke, there's flames, there's fire alarms. If you show them pictures, do they understand what that means? If, you, if your smoke detector goes off, do they leave the house? Also, if you were really working with somebody on staying home alone and the smoke detector goes off even when you're cooking, your best bet is to go ahead and evacuate anyway, even though you know it's a drill, but if you work with your family member and they know every time this goes off, we go out, it's gonna really work on that repetition. And that way, in case there is an emergency, they will step out and, and, and leave because it's been kind of drilled in them. The second question, can the person evacuate for a fire drill in two minutes? That's for us, that is one of the things we really look at. We, we've ran fire drills at different times when they're asleep, when they're awake, and do they know how to use a fire extinguisher? And do you want them to use a fire extinguisher? There are um, some people that, we support that we would probably put that kind of stuff away and, and kind of lock that stuff up so it is not uh, available. But would they know what to do if there was a fire? Would they know to leave? Um, if, they're, if they're playing a game, would they leave the game to, to, to go out the door? If they're sleeping, would they wake up and, and go out the door? Those are things to really think about if they're home alone. Does the person um, recognize indications for a tornado? Would they know where to go? An example, um, I have for that as somebody I support. We have actually made another good idea is we make a little box um, 
we call it a tornado box uh, or a, a weather box. And I keep it, we kept it in the basement. And in that box had some snacks, um, some, dr some little drinks, some games, the weather, another weather, weather radio that you could turn. When the person had to go down there, they didn't, the phone didn't work right away. It worked later. There was no internet. There was nothing else. She had some things to do down there. Um, and was able to kind of be safe with new stuff and new what was in the box. So it was new stuff that she didn't see every day that was able to keep her a little calm. We were finally able to get a landline and be able to talk to her a little bit and, and make sure she was okay until st a staff could get there. But really having that kind of stuff and having that stuff ready, we had a pillow, we had a blanket just in a, in a tote. And that really kind of helped um, calm her down and keep her relaxed, especially since the power went out, we had a flashlight in there, that kind of stuff. So thinking about those kind of things that would um, would help somebody if they're home alone. Again, we can't control the weather and tornadoes, I mean, usually we do a pretty good job about knowing that, knowing when they're coming. But in that case, we had a rainstorm and it just came in pretty quickly or I, I wouldn't have left her home alone. It was just one of those weird things that happened. So again, one of the things that we do is that we run um, tornado drills. We practice, 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 practice. We wanna make sure that we know what's going on, that um, your family knows what to, to do if there is a tornado. And again, we kind of look at the, the two minute mark. And this is the same thing for earthquakes. I think earthquakes are really hard to, to even teach because we can't predict them. We can't even predict them in our own lives, much less us try to predict to teach somebody when when that there's gonna be an earthquake that happens because we can't, we have no idea. I do have a couple of questions. Okay. So one is, which type of weather radio do you suggest or recommend because there's so many? One of the weather radios that we recommend that we use in all of our homes, we actually have two. One of them is actually a crank radio. Um, and it is on Amazon. It is red. I don't have the exact name, but we use that one as a crank radio. And there's one that has a battery backup that's also on Amazon. It is black and it's $14.99. <laughs> and then the next um, question is, should I also call the fire department to flag my home? Do the group? Yes, home? that would not be a bad idea. We okay. only call the police department because when we have called the, the police department, they let most of them have said that they let the fire department know, but it's not a bad idea to call your fire department either. And then um, how often do you suggest that families practice safety drills? Should it be monthly, quarterly, what, what's best? We do, we do um, fire drills monthly. And again, anytime that it goes off by accident, go ahead and practice. It's a great practice to go ahead and, and, and do that. And then tornado drills, especially this time of year, as many storms and stuff as we've had, we've had coming in, it's probably not a bad thing to, to talk about it ahead of time and say, you know what, weather's coming in, what do we do if this happens and, and that kind of stuff and just kind of prepping that and kind of working on that throughout, throughout the year, especially it, for us more in the spring for the tornadoes. This one, is, this next ass assessment question is, can the individual dial a phone number independently? That is changing again as technology has changed. There's a lot of things that we can do now that maybe they don't have to dial a phone. We, we could look at um, one of those monitors. I've looked up a couple of those, um, those medical monitors, medical alarm braces that they could pull if they, if they needed that to, if they were home alone and an emergency happened. Um, you could speed dial things. There's also now Alexa's. Uh, that I talk about a little bit later is the Alexa show where a person could hit a button and call somebody through your Alexa and be able to talk to somebody um, if there's a problem. So looking at that and then also knowing who to call and when to call. And I think I talk a little bit more about that. If something happens, don't immediately call 911. Who, who do you call first? Kind of working on that kind of stuff. There's also phones that have, um, if you have a cell phone, you can program the pictures, the, the faces in, so they can go to the picture and, and push the button and, and call them too. So there's a lot of different things available out there that allow you to 
be able to give more independence. It's an exciting time, I think, for um, the people, the individuals we support to be able to get a little bit more independence because technology will enables that a little bit more, which I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see that and excited to watch as people grow and, and learn these skills. And I think it's wonderful. Again, um, we talked about calling 911 now, especially if you flag the house, uh, have your house flagged. If um, they call 911, it would automatically flag your home. So that will be okay. So this one I'm probably gonna like edit very soon is because you don't even have to be able to tell them your name and address anymore as things have getting, getting better. But it does help if they can tell kind of what's wrong if something happens. Uh, knowing when to call 911, I, I'm sure many people have had the issues where someone's called 911 <laughs> because you made them mad. Uh, one of my favorite situ uh, situations is someone we supported uh, couldn't get a hold of their mom. So they called 911 because they thought their mom was in trouble. So kind of knowing that, working on when to call 911, when not to call 911. Um, one of the teenagers that I've worked with called 911 because mom told him he couldn't go out that night. So that was an emergency. New, uh, new question. Yes, ma'am. Does the St. Louis ARC help evaluate the degree of independence my child may have? I would say that we work directly with families to help you determine that um, for your child. So we don't have a formal evaluation or anything like that that we do, but we do work hand in hand with families to make, uh, help them make those decisions. And that is kind of why we came up with this um assessment is to help families get that information to see um, if they feel like it is something they can do. So when you get the handouts, you'll have all of the questions on. And if you look through there and you're like, oh no, can't do that. Oh, nope, they don't know when to call if there's not an emergency. Oh, nope, can't do that. Then you know that it is just not time. And then maybe you, the idea with the probes is what areas do you need to start working on? Do you need to start working on not letting a person in? Do you need to start working on um, the person not answering the door or, or little things like that? So that's where, that's where we're, we're coming up with these kind of things to hopefully help you get the information that, that you need. One of my other suggestions with this one is, um, does a person know when to call when it is not an emergency? Um, Maybe it's you have a neighbor next door or, or you have them call, uh, call you. I know I have many coworkers whose children come home and they call their mom right away and say, hey, I'm home from school. I'm doing this now, that kind of stuff. So figuring out um, who else they can call and who else um, they can know for uh, in, in case if there's an emergency or just knowing that somebody's home, that kind of safety stuff. If the person does answer the phone, do they know not uh, what personal information not to give um, to give out over the phone? I don't know about anybody else, but I am getting spam calls after spam call after spam call. So um, I'm probably sh pretty sure that I am not the only one. So if a person is home alone and we have either a, a home phone or a um, cell phone, would they answer it? Would they give that information? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some phones and some apps that can definitely help you with safety a little bit later um, as we go on through this presentation that would help you with that kind of stuff. You can also have them practice a statement if you want them to, um, if they're home alone, or again, just not have them answer the phone. We have um, landline phones in all of our group homes, which is why we talk about the phone um, so much more than probably you do in your home. Most, most homes don't typically have a landline phone, but we um, do have one landline, at least one landline phone per, per home. Uh, we also require that, and this thing is, is in case something happens, cell service is out, we definitely have a telephone um, in each home that, that will work. Does the person not open the door to strangers? Um, my favorite example here is I was uh, talking to a family and they were saying that they were working on this. So the, the way they started checking on this, doing the probes was they walked outside and called their neighbor and had their neighbor come over and knock on the door. Um, they called a, a friend that had never met um, 
met their child and they had them come over and knock on the door while they were in the backyard planting flowers. So kind of giving, uh, giving them the independence, but still the safety to see if they would answer the door and they answered the door three out of three times with three different people. So that let them know what they need to start working on is who you answer the door for. Do we not answer the door to anybody? That kind of stuff that um, works on that and, and figuring out what to, what to do next and what part that you need to, to, to work on. Someone else was telling me in, in this class that their child did a very good job about not opening the door to strangers. And then um, a cat ran by, so they opened the door to go get the cat. And we'll talk about some, uh, when we get a little bit further past the assessment, we will talk about some of the safety things that, we, that um, myself and Carlton have been able to find that hopefully would help with some of that independence and that safety. So the next question in our assessment is, can the person use the stove? I mentioned earlier that if they can't use the stove, then maybe we just look at locks or if the person will agree not to use the stove. The goal would be that they would say, hey, okay, I won't, I won't use it, I won't do this and actually do that. In one of uh, a couple of my classes, I've been able to talk to people who have, this has been a huge problem with their loved ones with microwaves and, and ovens and, and the tops of stoves, such as using the metal bowl and the, and the fork in the microwave and they blew up a microwave while they were home alone. So what we looked at there is we talked about different kinds of, she actually got a lock that would put on the microwave that prevented it from being open when, um, no one was when the person was home alone. So there's all kinds of different things that we that we could look at to hopefully be able to get a person to have the independence and not take that away from them. But that's what the probes are for. The probes are, are to hopefully help you figure out what you need to do for that person to do it safely. So if you walk in another room, are, are they gonna turn the stove on? Uh, another fun story that someone told me about was the person wanted to make uh, spaghetti. Well, they put the spaghetti in the pot and they turned it on, but they didn't put any water in it. So they had a burnt spaghetti on the stove. So things like that. So this kind of goes along with the other one. Can the person use the oven independently? Uh, if they cannot use the stove, there's probably a good chance that they can't use the oven. But again, you want to look at that um, and try to figure those kind of things out. And this kind of goes along right with it, with the microwave. What kind of things do you, can they use the microwave? Uh, I've actually went um, and have gone back to some of the old dial microwaves because they're easier for some of the people we support to understand what to push and things like that or always hit one. So uh, have I have stickers on a couple of microwaves that tell them, okay, this is what you can push. And no matter what they, they cook, they'll put, it in, they'll put it on that. So we kind of have to work around finding things for them that fit in that one minute, two minute, three minute, that kind of stuff. Can the person shower with no one at home, no one home alone? Um, are they, do you feel like they're safe to do that? Are they a fall risk? Is, um, is it a bad storm? Would they know not to, preferably not to, to shower in a storm? Um, Maybe you just set up the, the expectation that they don't shower when they're, when they're home alone. So again, is there part of the house that the individual cannot safely mobilize or a part of the house that you don't want the person to mobilize? And would they agree not to go in those areas? So if you tell them, okay, I don't want you to go into my bedroom. And again, you walk outside or you take a walk around the block and come back and they've been in your bedroom, then you know that you got to think of something else. Um, hopefully you don't ever think that you have to have everything locked up, but maybe that's something you need to, that you would think about like putting a lock on the door or, um, putting a lock in an area so they can't go if they, if you don't feel like they're, they're safe to go in there. Would the person, can the person use appliances? Um, and are they safe using the appliances? Another one of... <laughs> Another one of my stories, I say, I love teaching this class because I always get funny stories at the end and I always get to, to have something to talk about the next time. Somebody was home alone and decided to make coffee, which is great, except they used the Keurig and they didn't know to put the pods in. So 
it was a little bit of a mess. And then the other way has also happened. They put the, um, they were gonna make a Keurig cup of coffee and they, they had one of those dual ones and they put it in the pot and put the water on top. So teaching how to use an appliance and whether they need to actually be able to use that appliance when you're gone and what you need to do. Do you need to put the toaster up? I think this is really, really important as far as does the individual know what to use with chemicals? Chemicals are really, I think they can be very dangerous if you don't know what, what to do with them. For example, um, the dishwasher. I have talked to many, many families who have walked in and had bubbles everywhere. Um, they used too much soap or they used, uh, my favorite one is the, the family who walked in and, the, and their loved one had um, tried to cook something and made a mess. So they decided to clean it up. So they decided to go ahead and run the dishwasher and they used Dawn dish detergent and they had bubbles everywhere. So does, does your loved one know what to do, which chemicals to use, which chemicals not to use um, together or at all? And uh, how to use them. If they don't, maybe you just need to be able to put that stuff up in a way. Uh, but if you think about it, okay, something happens and I was making popcorn and I made a mess and it's all over the floor. Now I want to clean it up. Oh, what do I clean up with? Oh, well, I know mom uses Dawn, so I'm going to use Dawn and I'm going to clean it up. Well, then you've got slippery and sliding and it's real blue and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So I'm going to use this to try to clean this up to try to clean up the mess and then it just makes a big mess. So kind of look at those expectations and maybe say, hey, if you make a mess, it's okay. Let's clean it up together when I get home and, and not have them try to clean it all up on their own. Would the individual actually remain at home? If you are outside in your backyard and that's a great probe is to get, start giving that person a little bit of freedom by walking out, maybe taking a, a, a lap around your block or going out in the backyard would they stay? Would they leave? Uh, is that okay if, if they go next door to the next door neighbor's house or leave if they're alone? So I think it's very similar that you would, you would start with your own um, preteen or tween as they go through and trying to figure out what things work and, and what things don't and um, figuring out whether you feel like your loved one is, is safe to do that. The next one is about medications. Can the person take their own medications? Um, do you want them to take a, their medications when they're home alone? I work with, um, he's probably, I think he's about 22 and his, he has transportation. It comes and picks him up. His parents go to work and he gets up on his own. He gets his breakfast ready. He gets everything ready to go. He takes his medicine, those little, um, Boxes work really, really well with a lot of people we support and giving them that independence and knowing um, what medicines to take. And I really like the one that just has the day. So it only has three little boxes for morning and afternoon and night. So I think I really like those because it gives you that independence, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of extra meds that someone can take by accident. So it's a good, good way to go. So there are many safety items that can be used on home alone safety. So this is where I'm gonna kind of bring Carlton in. There's lots of different apps. And if you guys know of any more that I don't mention, mention please bring it to me because I would love to hear about more of those kind of things. So one of the ones um, to think about is just the Ring app. With the Ring app, you can, you can know who is coming to your house. You can know if, um, who has come around, all the cameras around your home. That's what I was talking about with technology. It, it's really nice and easy to be able to see kind of what, what's going on. And as things change, it, it makes it even better for someone to be able to be safe. That also will tell you if, um, if someone will stay home, that it will go off when they leave. So if they use the right door. So again, that's the, the con with this is that you've got to know where it is, which door is it on, and it has to be either charged or plugged in. I have found um, when I looked the other day that I thought Ring was just a doorbell app, but when I'm looking at this, it actually has a lot more stuff. It has cameras, it has smart lights, you could put it with outlets and security systems, and the costs seem pretty reasonable. 
Uh, and I just looked at something called the Ring Protect Pro that would include some of that other stuff with the cameras and doorbells. Kenny, do you, uh, Carlton, do you know anything about the Ring app? Um, yeah, so I know a lot about the Ring app, actually. So the Ring app, it actually records movement outside. Um, you can set the app to where you can make it motion censored for humans because you got animals, you got the wind, uh, you got cars driving by. So you can set the motion forward for either uh, physical. And what I mean by physical, I mean human, for, human form or uh, just transparent phys physical or that's basically like cats, wind, um, cars driving by. Uh, the Ring app records and keeps your um, surveillance in a file, in their own personal file. Nobody can get into it but you uh, with your access code. Um, or whatnot. I actually have a few of them. I have one for my front door, my back door, and I love it. I actually, um, I, I have one of these cameras uh, for my backyard, and I, I got something off of Amazon. It is not the ring. It is not um, done by Amazon at all, even though I bought it off Amazon, but it, it's kind of the same thing. It does record everything. It, it lets me know when any, whenever anything walks by. I will tell you, my cat has found that, and most of my pictures are of my cat sniffing it and, and kind of letting me know she's there. So there's definitely lots of those little camera options that are um, censored with any kind of, like Carlton said, sometimes the wind, an animal. Every time the wind blows, uh, sometimes my thing goes off. But Yeah, and you can also have the app down. It can be downloaded on your iPad, your cell phone, um, your computer, your desktop. If you have a smartwatch, you can definitely have it downloaded on your smart smartwatch. And anytime the sensor goes off, the video pulls up automatically to just let you know, hey, there's a uh, movement at your front door. Uh, people can press the button and it'll ring. And you can, and then you can also talk through it, um, through a lot of the, the ring lights. I personally feel that you should go, you can buy from Amazon if you want to, but I, I got mine from Best Buy. And what I like about Best Buy is they give you a live description of how and how to set it up and how it actually works. I have a question for both of you, I think. Um, what are your thoughts on using technology like home security cameras to monitor your child at home while you are out to see how they do? Or would you consider that to be invading their privacy or independence too much? I would say that's a great way to start. I think it's... Um, it kind of lets you know what's going on uh, in your home. And I don't, I personally do not think that it is evading too much of the privacy, obviously not in the bathroom or bedroom, things like that. But definitely it's a great way to figure out kind of what's going on, whether they're going to follow it. Um, and actually I have another device I'm going to show you in a few minutes. It's a little sneakier that's along those lines. So I am not opposed to it. What about you, Carlton? I am not opposed to it either uh as she said i wouldn't put it in the bathroom um or the child's bedroom unless you feel that the child is a danger to themselves and you just need to see um what they're doing uh but no i'm not opposed to getting an in-home camera you can put it in the front room the kitchen if you have a basement put it in the corner in the basement um or whatnot a hallway um i do know a lot of parents that i do uh support their uh children they definitely have some in their homes as well so i don't opposed to it at all so speaking of that i told you there's a device um, that is a little more sneaky along those lines i looked up this camera clock i it's one of those it looks like a clock you really can't see that it is a camera and it is that sneaky way to be able to check on your loved one to see if how they are doing if they don't want you to know so that kind of goes back to yeah i agree that it's okay to do that <laughs> for, for this reason I just found this the other day. It's um, $65.95 on Amazon. And um, they actually had them under, you could Google discrete clocks and they had some of those uh, there too. I like this for different reasons. When I actually went to the actual app, it the night vision looked just like day. It can stream directly to your phone. So it's like a nanny cam. Under most times, we try to do the most independence possible and not invade someone's rights. And I really appreciate the question that you asked about that earlier, because that's important to think about that kind of stuff and, and thinking about their rights. But also kind of hopefully this is a way to give them more rights. If you check it, 
and you watch it and then you realize, okay, then I don't have to watch it 24. I don't have to watch it the whole time I'm gone. Maybe I'll check in once an hour. It gives that person that little independence and that fade away that, that would give you your, your thing for safety. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are some different phones that have um, some really secure settings that I really um, like a lot. Pinwheel was a new phone um, to me. I have a friend who has a son that um, learns about everything he can about phones and they have done much research on almost any phone that's out there and they love Pinwheel. And here's why. The, as you can see, they can't delete messages. The parents have full control. So it's a great way to start with a new phone by giving them a phone, being able to see what's on there and what's not on there. No streaming, no games, no social media. The other, it looks like a, it looks like a, a plain smartphone. So it looks like everybody else's. I really like that you can add, you can take away some of the safety stuff as things progress and they get better and can use the phone more. You can give them a little bit more control and still be able to kind of look and see what's going on. Uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And the other one I liked about this is that it can work with many carriers. And um, I'm gonna talk about the Bark app in a few minutes, but the Bark app can actually be used with the pinwheel and the Bark app has a locator on it. So the family that I have talked to that uses this uh, says this is the best ever that she, she has seen and she has used many different ones. Here's the kind of the pros with it, uh, I mean the cons with it, I'm sorry. The con is the cost. There is three different, there are three different um, types of phones. If you are gonna do, if you have if this one, if, if you have an Apple product, you have to be able to use, if you have an Apple phone yourself, to make it a, uh, work with this phone, you have to get the Pinwheel Plus. So each one of these has an addition. Um, the cost is, is less because they have less functions and less features. With this Pinwheel, you pay $14.99 a month for a subscription and you have a, um, you have a Pinwheel portal. In that Pinwheel portal, it will tell you you decide who can be friends with that person. You can decide what contacts are saved in the phone. You can decide exactly when they can use the phone. It will um, turn off. Uh, it goes into something called school mode. And so uh, this young man can use it for like an hour a day and it turns on at six o'clock and it turns right off at seven o'clock. So I really do like for this one, but also this one is a separate um, fee for your cell service. So you have to pay the $14.99 a month, the cell service for, for the phone, and then you have to pay for the phone. So that's something to kind of think about. So another one of these um, phones, this is a phone, it's called Gab Wireless. And it is similar to Pinwheel. As you can see, the pros for Pinwheel has a lot more parental controls and a lot more um, features and stuff than Gab. Gab is still good. The family that I've talked about who is using Pinwheel now, she looked at Gab. The, diff the reason she did not like Gab is that if the person deleted anything from the phone, they could not see it. It didn't show up on their their browsers, whereas anything that shows up on the pinwheel phone will never, that person cannot delete it. You would be able to see that even if they deleted it on their end, which is kind of nice. Um, again, there's no social media, no app store. And I'm gonna kind of jump off um, this for just a second to kind of talk about something else that um, I do. I work with a, a young lady and she loves her her games and she loves her gamings, gaming stuff and she likes to buy her avatars. And this year alone, she has charged $2,500 to her mom's credit card. So I have been helping them with different ideas on what to do with gaming and social media. It's a really good way for a lot of people to meet friends. 
mom put her credit card in because you have to have a credit card on file and uh, ended up charging, like I said, $2,500. So we've had to look at different things, prepaid cards. Um, we looked at the green, is it called green? And that is a credit card that can be managed by families. The one uh, con that we have found with that is it's that if green you are light. in a green light. green light, you're right. Sorry, thank you. The problem with green light is when we try to sign somebody up on online, if they were over the age of 18, then it would not allow you to sign them up because they're considered an adult. You actually have to call and get special permission to be able and explain why an adult would need that kind of a card. So sorry, that was my little junction off that for one second. So with Gab Wireless, uh, again, here's the cost of um, the phones. It, the, the phone plan is $17.99. So that includes everything. They also have a per, uh, parental portal. So it, it, it is something that it, that is good. And it obviously goes down if you do more of a contract. So the benefit of this one over the pinwheel is that the phone service is included in this one. It's a two-year contract with um, the phone. So with Pinwheel, you have to pay for the phone service and the $14.99 a month. With this one, you, you do not. It is both together. That is a little bit of an advantage. So some of the apps that are really good for smartphones is CapsKey. So CapsKey um, can be used with Android or iPhones. It has um, the family GPS app. It um, has a safe browser. It's all kind of together, which allows, again, it has the parental controls. You can control how long you're on the, on the, uh, the phone. Um, it will, if anything comes up, if they try to, to go to a restricted area, it will notify you. Um, there's a free, there's a free version that has uh, the GPS, all of that kind of stuff is included. I really like this one. Actually, I looked up um, the top 10 apps in, um, apps for safety for, uh, this one was actually for, for tweens. And um, Capski, Capski was number four on their, their, their top 10 list. Uh, this one is gonna go kind of way back down. This is called Safety for Kids app. This is actually a game. And it is a game that I downloaded on my phone to kind of see what it was like. And this game um, really goes back to what we were talking about in the assessment in the first area, first part where you want to look at whether they can stay home alone. These actually work on those kind of things. So it's a game game that they can do it and you can do different. Each chapter is talking about different things. So it's you have a little um, avatar and you you play your game and then they have an emergency and what do you do and it works through that and if you do it wrong it goes back and says okay let's try this again and they go through different scenarios so the first three chapters are free and then after that it is a dollar a chapter and it's up to 12 chapters and I would say probably the level on that is probably second third grade um, area but it, it it is nice um, I've um, played with it with someone who was six and just to see how it would do and she was able to to work on it and not feel like it was too babyish for her but again she's pretty young. Tracy do the apps um, can they be used on iPads versus phones? Yes ma'am each one of these apps can be used on a phone or an iPad and and all of the apps should be good they're they're both good for Samsung products and for iPad products, I mean, for iProducts, I've looked at both of them. If, it, if it's only good for one or the other, it was specifically say on here. I think there's one in here that is only good for Android products, not for iProducts. So this is another game um, that is actually done by the way at Red Cross. Um, and this again goes back to that first thing with the probes and kind of working on, okay, you figured out that the person can't stay home alone because they can't leave safely it's games that will um, work with them and kind of go through each of those level levels. It's called Monster Guard. Uh, this one is only on the computer, not on the phone. And this is done by the Red Cross. And I liked it. I, I will be honest, it took a lot of data and it took a long time to kind of download everything. 
And again, it's a game. So that kind of helps that moving forward, kind of not thinking like you're learning anything. Here, uh, another browser, we actually found a browser is called the Spin Safe browser. And this was actually, I think, number six on the list of um, the top 10 safety things. So this one, uh, again, it's good for children and anyone who you need to kind of watch out for. It blocks all kind of, uh, it blocks all types of inappropriate content. You have to kind of look at everything. It's, it's definitely helps with that kind of stuff. The one I like about the spin safe, it really is good for YouTube. It will automatically block anything that um, should not happen uh, with YouTube. So they can't get to the videos and stuff that they would want. So that's a pretty good, pretty good app to try. And I also like this one because there's no um, hidden surfing. So when some of them, some of them to think about it that they, you can kind of look at different things. I like the idea of, again, giving the independence, but keeping the safety and, and letting them prove that they can do that. And then you can um, kind of let up on some of these. And I really like this too, because um, Spin Safe is another one of those that you can decrease the amount of um, restrictions on there as the person proves that they can handle those. This is the one I talked about earlier that would, um, that actually works with the pinwheel phone. This is Bark. Bark is number one on the safety apps that, that, that um, is recommended for children and teens, tweens, excuse me. So it, it does everything. It looks at YouTube, um, Facebook, Twitter. It manages screen time alerts. It can filter everything. It also has the location part that's in there. I also like Bark because you can try it for a week to see if it's something that you, wanna, that you want to use. The family um, that I mentioned earlier, they have the pinwheel phone and they have the Bark app downloaded on the pinwheel phone, phone. So they can look at pinwheel and they can look at Bark and it really kind of, pinwheel does a lot of like who they talk to and, and making sure that they cannot uh, get to talk to certain people so it, it kind of handles the phone part and then you add Bark in and that handles all the social media part. So it, it's together, they work very well. Again, there's also a cost. So it's not, uh, Bark is $99 a year or $14, $14.99 a month for the premium. I did look at um, what Bark Jr. was. Bark Jr. is um, only $49 a year, but it doesn't... Um, it doesn't give you the same capabilities of looking at all of the Snapchat and Instagram and YouTube and all of those kind of things. I will tell you, Snapchat, as someone who works with different people and has nieces and stuff in my life, Snapchat scares me because it's it. There's no, there's no way to look at once the picture's gone. It's gone from your your place so you can't see it as a parent unless you have something like bark or something like that to look on to see that they have received this picture but you don't know what has happened on the other end so a uh, a great example that i had was this family that uses the pinwheel app their son had gotten on um snapchat and was sending inappropriate pictures and was receiving inappropriate pictures from Snapchat. And until they got the Bark app, they were not aware that that was going on. But with that extra security of the Bark app, they were able to see that. Something else to look at, safety, safety, safety. So I mentioned this in the probe, um, talking about the Alexa show. I really like, I like Alexa, Alexa's great. Alexa's really helped a lot of people that we support. Um, they can be very independent in telling them what they want. They can say, play this, play that, um, look this up, all of that kind of stuff. And it's really helped the independence of a lot of people. So if you have ever been think about an Alexa, I think it's a great way to give a little bit of independence. The Alexa show uh, actually has, it looks like a little iPad and it has a video and a touch screen and it enables you to kind of talk to each other. Um, through Alexa, and, and you do have to have um, the Wi-Fi on and, and those kind of things. Carlton, do you want to talk a little bit more? Do you know anything about Alexa Show? Yes, ma'am. Alexa Show is definitely one of my specialties. <laughs> um, as she said, Alexa Show is, is basically is a little iPad 
Um, it got a camera on it. <clears throat> uh, it has to be hooked up to a Wi-Fi. You have to have an Amazon account. An Amazon account. And the reason why you have to have an Amazon account is because um, it also does drop-in calls. Oh. And um, it wants to connect to your contacts. Now, you can control this by going into your Alexa app and disabling the drop-in call. So that way, can nobody drop in um, on them? But say you are out and about and your child is at home and you just want to drop in and see what they're doing or see how they're doing, you can say, hey, Alexa, drop, drop in at home in Carlton's bedroom. And it will go ahead and drop on in. The Alexa show will send out an alarm. Um, it's really fancy. You can also set the alarm sound. Um, and it's an alarm to just let the person know that someone is about to drop in um, or whatnot. You drop in, you see them, they see you, you guys a video chat. Uh, you can, like you say, you can ask Alexa to do anything. Alexa, what's the weather for today? Alexa, tell me a joke. Alexa, um, give me good recipes. Alexa, what are good TV shows? Alexa, how can I be safe at home? Um, Alexa can answer and do, uh, the Alexa show can answer and do everything. I will prefer the Alexa show over the Alexa dot. And the reason why is because the Alexa show actually has a screen and it actually shows videos. Um, if, you, if you're a child um, dealing with autism, the Alexa show is perfect because you can go to the Alexa show and say, Alexa, play videos to help my child calm down if they have anxieties. Um, Alexa, give me funny things to, to um, help my child with sensory. It will do that. So. The Alexa show is very much so on top of my priority list. <laughs> Do you, either of you, know of any funding sources to help cover the cost of the apps or the devices as the prices can really add up? Yes. So um, as far as the St. Louis Art Go, we do have a program that helps with um, funding devices for certain residents that attend the programs, but also are, are residential homes. Um, so if you say uh, your child attends one of our day programs, and you would like to have this device in your house, we do have a program that you guys can go through and you can reach out to me to figure out how to uh, get in contact with the coordinator for that program. Uh, my email is cmckinney at slark.org. Uh, we have, as of today, we have got three individuals, uh, two Alexa shows and an iPad through the program. So it, it helps out a lot. Um, or whatnot. As far as the apps go, some app, some devices come with an app code where you can use the uh, code for a year. Um, we are definitely in the process as of right now trying to get more access to the code as a, as a team and as an agency so that way we can be able to disperse it. But like I said, it only works for a year and after a year, um, the cost will basically be on the parent or the guardian. I think the other thing that's available is if you have a um, case manager through the St. Louis Regional Office, there are Medicaid waivers mm -hmm. that will also help pay for apps and devices. So that is something you can explore. Um, so those are some things to think about. Um, with the Alexa show, um, if your child asks Alexa show for inappropriate things, will it do it? <laughs> so again, you can, when you down, when you get an Alexa show, you have to get the Alexa app. You can go into the Alexa app and you can disable any kind of negative, um, negative or inappropriate content on that device. Um, that was one of the situations um, a while back where one of uh, somebody's child was looking up inappropriate things on Alexa. And I just went in, signed in, went to the contact, disabled it. And it, the Alexa basically said, I'm sorry, I can't do that right now. <laughs> is, what it, uh, is what it'll tell it. So yes, you, can, you, can, you will be able to disable any kind of um, inappropriate contacts, inappropriate phone calls. You'd also be able to um, disable any kind of funding. Like if you're credit card is linked to the Amazon account, you can disable the Alexa show from making purchases as well. So um, one of the, the other apps, and I don't know if you know this one, Carl, uh, Carlton, the Net Nanny. Have you heard oh, of this one? No, that's my first time. So this one, this one um, I felt like is not, it, it's definitely an option. 
I uh, liked it for the, the cost. The cost is only um, $54.99 uh, for five devices. I actually looked that up yesterday and this is still the same price. It definitely does have the filters. It blocks the, um, it blocks pornography. It helps with the screen time. So it does give you um, some of the same stuff that um, the Alexa Show does, except Alexa Show is interactive. This is just one-sided. So it's not, you can't have conversations. Um, it's just, again, a way to monitor it. It's like a nanny. You look after it. It doesn't interact back with you. And another one I have found uh, like this is uh, Quistito. Quistito. <laughs> yeah. So this one, again, I don't believe that it, this one is um, for, that we talked about earlier. I told you there was one that was only for Android products. This is it. You cannot use um, Quisto, however you say it, on um, iProducts. It can only be used on um, Android products. This one is, you can actually, you have a, uh, a place that you can look it up. I, I, I don't know if it's called a parental portal, but it's something along those lines. And it looks up 30 days of activity on any social media. So you can see every site that a person has gone to, every site that they have looked at in, the, um, in that. And you can do five devices for again, 54.95 and you can do time limits per device. So if you have three different um, kids that you're doing at three different ages, you can put time devices on every single one and kind of go from there. It has the call tracking and the blocking. And um, the blocking, I, I really liked uh, going through. And when you look at these apps, they're also talking a lot about the cyber bullying and, and those kind of things. And all of these apps kind of help along with that and, and working on that kind of stuff. When we talked about the pinwheel phone earlier, that one had an actual alarm. If there's anything in any phone conversation that, sa that sounds like it's suicidal ideations or anything that sounds like bullying, in the pinwheel phone, it will automatically um, alert the adult who's attached to that phone, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty cool. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the that app also, even if you delete the history, it can still pull it up in the last 30 days, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Okay. Yes, and pinwheel, even if you delete it on your on your end, um, the person who is controlling that ha has um, complete, not even 30 days, they have complete until you delete it. So you delete it, perfect. Okay. So um, I've also added in here a couple uh, community safety assessments. Uh, I, somebody asked earlier about how, when do you know, uh, does anybody help you with figuring out when they can be, uh, be home alone? These assessments can also be used for deciding whether someone's safe to go in the community and um, being able to be in the community without support. So I've looked at both of these and I've kind of worked on both of these. And I, I like um, I like the top one a little bit better than the bottom one. I feel like it's a little bit easier to work with, but both of those um, are definitely uh, available. Here's another question for you all. So the monitoring is great, but any idea how much time parents will need to review the app device data about what our child are viewing <laughs> and talking about? So I guess it depends on how much time they're using it. Yeah, I was just gonna say, it depends on how much time that they are using the device. I would say, I'm hoping they're not using it no more than an hour, two hours at a time. And uh, it also depends on the age of the child as well. Well, and a lot of these um, apps and stuff has a, like a signal to, to the person that managing it, that if they hit anything like pornography or anything that's unsafe, it kind of gives an, an automatic alert too. Isn't that correct, Carlton? Yes, that's very much correct. So that kind of what, that would help um, decrease the amount of time you're spending because you can kind of look at it and see if any alerts has come, come through and kind of just look at things. But I mentioned earlier about the bullying some of the other apps also have some stuff. If it, if it is considered unsafe, they will send an alert. So that will kind of help. You don't have to read every sentence on every time they get online. I do want to make sure that um, everyone has mine and Carlton's contact information. Uh, he, he gave you his email at cmckinney at slark.org. I'm at tthomas at slark.org. 
and you guys can answer uh, ask us any questions and if we don't know the answer we'll be glad to go look it up definitely and we appreciate everyone's time and being here tonight it, it means a lot to both of us that you took your time out of your day to to be here and uh, listen to us. 